Call him Long John, the lion, or even Wild Thing. There's no doubt that John Daly was always going to stand out every time he made a swing on the golf course. Unfortunately, his achievements were masked by his popularity for all the wrong reasons. A great golfer, but a wild man. John is one of the greatest to ever play the game despite his gambling and marital troubles. How is he so unlucky with love? What led to a downward spiral in his career? Stick around as we take a look into the life and tribulations of John Daly. Welcome to Golf Links. Don't forget, subscribe to this channel to get notifications on new video drops. It's difficult to talk about John's illustrious career without mentioning his struggles with alcohol, gambling, drugs, and misconduct. However, his significant wins since he turned professional in 1987 were enough to place his name in the book of golfing legends. At first, John featured mostly in minor events, which wasn't shocking as he was largely inexperienced. Luckily, his efforts paid off when he won the Missouri Open in South Africa for his first professional win. Playing well against experienced players was a major confidence booster and more than enough for him to win his first ever PGA Championship in 1991. He wasn't even meant to play in this tournament, being a ninth alternate. However, fate had other plans for him, and Nick Price had to withdraw from the event as his wife had went into labor. So, John spent the entire night on the road and made it just in time to claim his spot in his third ever major. It was a small price to pay for another shot at fame. No pun intended. Strangely enough, John hadn't even practiced, but you couldn't tell with how he stepped up to the occasion. This virtually unknown rookie strolled to the top with a three-stroke victory over Bruce Litsky, and the Lion became a household name. However, another piece of news made the rounds almost more than his victory at the time. Maybe it was out of euphoria or a sense of responsibility, but John gave out $30,000 at the event. A man had died at the tournament due to an unfortunate lightning strike, and this professional golfer decided to give this huge amount of money to the family to pay off the college expenses of his two daughters. The question is, was he really in the right financial position to be that generous with his money? I mean, sure, the prize money was about $230,000, and $30,000 out of this doesn't sound like a lot. However, John was not a wealthy man yet by any stretch of the imagination. This was only a glimpse into his inability to manage his money properly. Still, this unexpected win got massive media attention, instantly propelling this rookie into international fame. This was the first time a rookie would ever win a major title since Jerry Pate did it in 1976 at the US Open. So you can understand why this was such a big deal. He got a well-deserved PGA Tour Rookie of the Year award in 1991, and it seemed like there was nowhere else left for John to go but up. Everyone loved him. He had started to build a cult-like following from loyal fans, effectively making him one of the most popular players on tour. 1992 was off to a fantastic start with several top 10 finishes, but things began to unravel as people began to get a glimpse of his character outside golf. In 1993, John didn't win a single PGA Tour event, and this was quite unexpected. Going a year without any wins while struggling with drinking problems and a lavish lifestyle took its toll on Long John. Unfortunately, he wasn't great at hiding his frustrations at not having any top tens to his name. Of course, his game suffered more because of this, and eventually, he flipped out publicly. He walked off the golf course mid-round and made matters worse by throwing his scorecard at the tent containing the officials. Of course, this was a major case of misconduct, and with the world watching, they had to make a scapegoat out of John. So the Lion was suspended by the PGA Tour as punishment, and he was pretty loud about his claims that most pro golfers were using cocaine. Eventually, he admitted that his alcohol addiction was taking a toll on him, and John checked into rehab in 1994. The golfer felt that three weeks was enough and returned feeling like a new man. Well, it felt like he was right. He went on to win the 1994 Bell South Classic, making it his third PGA Tour title as this was a breath of fresh air after all the heavy drama surrounding his life. Plus, this was his first win where he was completely sober, which was quite an achievement for the legend. A year later, John unexpectedly won his second major, the Open Championship, but wasn't lucky enough to be selected by Ryder Club. 
Surprisingly, he's the only golfer to not get picked despite being a two-time major winner. Between 1996 and 2000, this experienced golfer exhibited extreme attitudes that either had him kicked out of events or forced to withdraw, which happened at the 1997 Players' Championship. Meanwhile, he kept getting sent to rehab. In John's typical, unexpected fashion, the world watched in 1998 as he recorded the highest score on a single hole in PGA Tour history while he finished that year in the top 10. The contrast was the next year, when he was once again in the news for his alcohol addiction, gambling habits, and controversial statements. With a little balance in 2001, John won the BMW International Open, making it his first European Tour victory in a whopping six years. In 2002, he made it into the Arkansas Golf Hall of Fame. 2003 was another year where he was included in the Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2004 video game, and thanks to a remarkable comeback in 2004, he won the Comeback Player of the Year. Making it to number four on the PGA Tour ranking was the highest he would ever attain. After his problems with his personal life kept outshining his wins, he lost major events and basically dwindled down the golf ladder. However, there's still some good news. The Wild Thing won the Insperity Invitational in 2017 on the Champions Tour after turning 50. Unfortunately, his terrible lifestyle caught up with him in 2020 when he was diagnosed with bladder cancer. He had surgery to remove the mass. However, John continues to play golf and get paid for appearances, hoping to make another comeback now that he's making an effort to live a healthier lifestyle. Meanwhile, John struggled with the ups and downs in his career. Many other aspects of his life attracted major public attention. Most of the time, more than his breathtaking achievements on the golf course, we're talking about his toxic relationship with alcohol, passion for life in the fast lane, through gambling, and most of all, his love life. John's just not that good at choosing a partner. John has dated lots of women in his lifetime. So far, he's married four and seems about to put a ring on the fifth. His first marriage was in 1987 to a model named Dale Crafton. Dale lived a really comfortable life as she was from a wealthy family in Arkansas, but this wasn't enough to keep them together. Just three years later in 1990, John and Dale got divorced. Ironically, this was just a year before he won the PGA Championship. It's possible they split due to the pressure John faced to kickstart his career. Within a few months of divorcing his first wife, John met Betty Fulford. The pair fell in love just two months after John's first divorce. Meanwhile, trouble came knocking when Betty revealed that she was divorced, had a 13-year-old son from her ex-husband, and was actually 10 years older than the age she claimed when she met John. Just one confession would have been too much but three confessions all at once? John publicly lost his cool. At the time, Betty was pregnant with their daughter, and eventually they figured it out, settled down, and got married in 1992. However, the birth of his daughter, named Shina Hale, wasn't enough to solve his addiction to alcohol. This led to terribly violent behavior, and fans were shocked when John was charged with third-degree assault. Apparently, he had thrown her against a wall during a heated fight in their home. Betty didn't wish to pursue charges after John was arrested, but they had the inevitable divorce. Once again, the lovebird was out hunting, and this time, it was Paulette Dean. They got married in 1995, and it all ended in 1999, not so long after they had their daughter, Sierra Lynn. Next up was Sherry Miller, who John married in 2001 and seemed like this would be the one. However, the highlight of this relationship was the public fights and they later separated despite having a son, John Daly II, in 2003. Surprisingly, this pro golfer has been in a relationship with Anna Kladakis for more than a decade, and it seems like this would be much different from the rest. However, they haven't gotten married yet, and there have been no controversy so far. So how much did John Daly really make? Well, official reports peg this as $10.2 million throughout his more than two decades as a professional golfer. He's currently worth just $2 million, which is kind of sad because he's lost most of it to his gambling addiction. John actually admitted that he lost as much as $55 million during his gambling years. During the peak of his career, he signed a $10 million deal with Wilson and was paid half a million dollars by Reebok every year for six years. This is only a glimpse into the numerous endorsement deals he enjoyed as a pro golfer. While his glory days may be behind him, the Lion is a legend that almost had what it takes to sit at the top.